Okay, hi there. Welcome to a short video spending a few minutes looking at a key economic idea, and that is the concept of a wage price spiral. So what is this, this idea of a wage price spiral? Well, essentially, it's the, the potentially strong link between the rate of inflation in an economy and how quickly wages are increasing. So the spiral is a situation where workers bid and negotiate for higher wages because they have seen their real incomes uh, cut by perhaps an increase in inflation. But the price wage price spiral can then lead to a further burst of cost push inflationary pressures in an economy. So how can a wage price spiral develop? We'll build a relatively straightforward flow diagram to, to show the process and the chain of causation. And here it is. So let's start with a situation where the rate of inflation starts going up, perhaps because of, of, uh, of an external shock, such as a steep increase in the, the price of uh, a global commodity, such as crude oil and natural gas. We've certainly seen this in the world economy in recent weeks and months. The cost of natural gas has, has increased uh, significantly. So rising inflation uh, increases the cost of living, uh, as measured by a nation's consumer price index. And then people's real incomes tend to go down. Real incomes uh, measure what you can actually buy with a given nominal or money income. And if wages, let's say, are rising by only 2%, but inflation is 4%, then real incomes are falling by minus 2%. And it's that fall in real income that can then trigger uh, workers' bidding to improve their wages. You see their real pay has gone down, so workers may try to negotiate better wages, perhaps supported by the collective bargaining power of unions. Unions, trade unions, try to bid for improved pay and conditions collectively on behalf of their members. Well, if they're successful and wages go up, that's going to lead to higher labour costs and the unit labour cost will go up if wages rise faster than productivity. Again, let's use a simple numerical example. If wages rise by, let's say, 5%, but productivity is only increased by 2%, then the unit labour cost for a business approximately is increased by 3%. And if unit labour costs go up, for many businesses, the, the wage bill is the big part of their costs. Firms may decide to increase their own prices. They may, they may choose to pass on higher costs to consumers, to their customers, to protect their profit margins. And of course, if prices go up, then that leads to a further second round increase in the general price level as tracked by the consumer price index. And with wages going up and inflation going up, uh, people's expectations of inflation can also then start to rise. So you can see there's a circularity here. There is always the risk that higher inflation triggers higher wages and higher wages can then lead to higher inflation. Now, a really key example point is the, the importance of expectations. So a wage price spiral is more likely when an increase in the actual cost of living leads to people increasing their own expectations of inflation. It's a nice phrase to use, but expectations of the future often drive behaviour today. And if people are bidding for higher wages, uh, the central bank, in this case the Bank of England and the UK, may be concerned that inflation expectations may start to get out of control, and that threatens their ability to meet their inflation target. In a recent article, The Economist wrote, if workers demand higher pay in expectation of future price rises, uh, well, that's an insurance that actually worsens the very thing it seeks to offset. So thinking in the current context, what, what is the risk of a wage price spiral affecting uh, the UK economy? Well, several points uh, point to potentially a wage price spiral emerging in the next year or so. First of all, inflation in the UK is now well above target, currently 3.1%. The Bank of England's inflation target is just 2%. And there's no doubt that millions of people will quite, quite quickly notice that their real incomes are taking a hit in 2021-22. Once inflation gets up to 3 4 perhaps 5% or more, people do tend to notice price changes more regularly. More obviously, for example, in their energy bills, 
in the shop, uh, the, the grocery bill at the end of the week. Many industries in the UK are experiencing labour shortages. That could also be a point in which firms are more prepared to accept the wage negotiations uh, with their employees. Job vacancies are at a record high, well over 1 million, which suggests that firms are finding it hard to attract the skilled workers they need. And there are plenty of stories, anecdotally, of businesses in different sectors increasing wages to attract and retain their key workers. For many years, the balance of power in the labour market has been firmly in favour of employers, particularly in an age of globalisation and a fall in unionisation. But perhaps, just perhaps, the balance of power in the labour market is tilting a little bit back more now towards workers. British households, according to the Resolution Foundation, will be £1,000 worse off next year. A combination of uh, rising energy costs, increased national insurance contributions uh, and fall in universal credit uh, uplift by the government. And it's this fall in real incomes that could cause people to want to offset this by bidding for higher wages. The FT uh, producing a story just recently, wage presses become inflationary flashpoint in a range of high income developed countries. And there's some evidence that wage inflation is now picking up. This chart shows the three month rolling average growth of, of wages. And you can see that uh, on some occasions wages fall, particularly after a global financial crisis and the immediate effects of the pandemic. But wage inflation in the UK is now at its highest rate uh, since the, uh, the start of the new millennium. So there's some evidence here that wage inflation is now starting to accelerate. But the risk of a return, if you like, to the high inflation of the 1970s, which became synonymous with the concepts of stagflation and the wage price spiral, I think are relatively low. The first evaluation point is that many firms, perhaps fairly profitable firms, can absorb higher wages in their own profit margins. They don't necessarily have to pass on higher labour costs to their customers. Second point is that well over 4 million people uh, currently work in the public sector, uh, in education, in local councils, the NHS and so on. And they have their pay directly controlled by uh, the pay review bodies, but ultimately by, by the government. Indeed, there's a, essentially a wage freeze happening at the moment. Trade unions are less powerful than they were 25, 30 years ago. Less than one person in four in a job is a member of a union. So that might therefore reduce the collective bargaining power that unions possess. And of course, expectations of inflation may be tempered by the fact that inflation, the rise in inflation we're seeing now, may prove to be relatively transitory, relatively temporary. Uh, inflation may fall back next year, who knows? In which case, expectations of inflation may move little from their current levels. And the Bank of England via the Monetary Policy Committee, stands ready and I think increasingly willing, willing to raise interest rates if they think inflationary pressures, both cost push and demand pull, need to be controlled. So in the private sector, we have a situation where there is generally lots of evidence that businesses are increasing pay, in some cases by 5, 10, 15 percent, to compete for workers from abattoir staff to bakers, from welders in the construction sector, to the HGV driver shortage that we know so well. Whereas in the public sector, uh, there essentially is a pause in pay. The government is pausing or freezing pay for the next year, although there's a 3% rise for NHS staff and those on the lowest pay rates. So we wait to see what happens. Uh, what, is the, what is the impact of the jump in energy prices, for example? Uh, what's the impact of a return to above average inflation? Are people's behaviours going to change? The risk of a wage price spiral, I think, has grown in the UK and in other countries. And this could be one of the big economic stories to watch in 2022 and beyond. OK, well, thank you for joining me on this video looking at the wage price spiral.